Bearden Bears fans, unfortunately, we're here after a Bears loss, but I'm going to give you the pros and cons. And yes, there are pros after the Bears took the L to the Green Bay Packers, and it starts right now. Now, first things first, no matter if we win, lose, or draw, I need to see Bear Dons in the comments right now. And make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to the page because we do talk Chicago Bears daily. It's the only channel talking Bears. Our Bears fans talk. So make sure that you get in tune with us, man. <sighs> Unfortunately, right, yesterday ended in a loss. And it didn't leave us feeling like our team was moving in the right direction, uh, right? Or at least that we're just not at that level yet. So I think there are some pros. I think there are some cons. But here's some of the ones that really stood out to me. Let's start with the positive, right? Here, I want to be positive about our Bears because you know what? Even though it's week two, it's a new regime. We still have a young quarterback that still has some improving to do, but he's shown us some flashes. There's still a lot to talk about there. I think the first thing that stands out to me, positive, Positive wise, right? You got to look at how the Chicago Bears ran the football. And I think it goes into a couple of different things, right? It doesn't just go into David Montgomery's 122 yards, but it also goes to the Bears showing a committal coming into that game, understanding that the Packers had given up 126 yards the week before and that that was going to be where they were vulnerable at. It shows you that the Bears at least had an understanding of, okay, this is kind of a weakness of theirs and we're going to try to attack it. And boy, did they attack it. Now, are there some things that go into that? that you might say, yeah, but you didn't attack it enough. You didn't do it enough on this drive, ins and out, right? We'll get to that kind of in the cons, but I think the thing that you have to look at is one that David Montgomery was running hard and doing a great job. Khalil Herbert also had some really nice runs for the Bears in there as well, and Justin Fields was able to get out and use his legs a little bit. And it just showed that that committal to the running game and an understanding of what, of, of what the weakness of the team they were playing and shows that there's an understanding in this coaching staff, whether the talent level is there yet or not, of how to come into a game with a game plan. And so I really felt good about what we saw out of that running game. And another pro that I have to point out, I mean, honestly, right, when you look at, to me, how the Chicago Bears offensive line was in run pro, I just felt really strong. I understand, right, it's basically just stand up and push uh, and just go forward. You want to see those uh, linemen moving forward, but... The fact that you were able to see strong edge uh, uh, creation by this offensive line, the fact that even Cole Komet getting in there and being able to do some really good things blocking in the run blocking game, right? I, I felt really good looking when I went back and looked at the tape on, on yesterday's game when you watched the run game. I mean... It seemed like the Bears were the aggressors for once. And we haven't seen that much over the last four years, right? So you combine the, the committal with it and the fact that the offensive line, while it was something they did well last year, there's a lot of new pieces on this line, but it's something that they did well tonight, right? It makes me feel better moving forward throughout the season, understanding that, okay, on the offensive end side of the football, it's not completely lost. It's not. There's not something that we just don't do well on both sides. The Bears had an ability to run the football, and I felt like that was a real pro in yesterday's game. Now, before I continue with the video, I do want to know how you guys feel, man. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be down there talking with you as well. What are your pros and cons from this game, man? Really want to hear from you guys, the fans. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be responding to you guys in the comments. Another pro for me, and I understand right, a lot of people are going to look at it and say, but, but we got killed all night going up and down the field. But another pro for me, I think, was the ability for the Bears to, to put pressure on the quarterback. Now listen, against Aaron Rodgers, right? Doesn't matter nearly as much. It, it's Aaron Rodgers. He's going to be able to get outside. If you, if you allow him uh, the opportunity to move around and make something out of a broken play, he's going to have the ability to make something out of a broken play. But at the end of the day, right, we saw pressure on Aaron Rodgers all night. We saw Aaron Rodgers being forced out of the pocket. I would love to see him them bring him down. But also, we saw that while the Bears were rushing four. So that really stands out to me that the Chicago Bears team, while rushing four, was able to get back there and create some pressure. Now, again, right, versus an offensive line that was a little bit up and down. The run blocking wasn't as great. 
Like I said, we'll get to that when we get to the cons. But the fact that you saw Robert Quinn in the backfield, Travis Gibson, right? They were really getting back to Aaron Rodgers, forcing him to go the other direction, forcing some sacks on him. He's just he's just one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL <laughs> in NFL history. Let's get it right, right? When it comes to uh, dealing with the pressures, dealing with getting hit, and being able to respond to it. So, but at a minimum, right? You're not going to face that night in and night out, especially on the schedule that we have this week. So if you can continue to create those pressures, right, I feel really good about how this defense is going to hold up moving forward. Unfortunately, though, right, we do have to get to the cons. Uh, and there were a lot of cons to take away in this game. I think that when you look at the performance from Kyler Gordon, I think that was the biggest con to me to start this thing off. I saw the stat earlier, right, and wrote it down, said he had 10, uh, he allowed 10 catches on 13 targets for 162 yards and a touchdown, only forcing one incompletion the entire night. I'm not saying that I'm worried about it, but I think the thing is, right, you look at that and you wanted Kyler Gordon to kind of come in and be the better option opposite Jalen Johnson. And in fact, right, he was picked on all night against Sammy Watkins, nonetheless, somebody who, yeah, when he's able to be out there and, and stay healthy, right, you can see him make some plays, but but he was looking like Tyreek Hill last night. Like, they were huge plays all night. And I feel like Kyler Gordon really looked lost in this defense. It really was a bit of a, of a concern as the night went on, right? Because you knew, again, right, I said this last season, they didn't have to go to Jalen Johnson. They didn't have to throw the ball Jalen Johnson's way because Kyler was on the other side the entire night getting picked on and getting killed. So I think that that was one of the big things that I, I really looked at, and I said that's a, that's a poor takeaway. And then, of, of course, listen, right, the pass pro. Now, here's the thing. The pass pro is a combination of things to me. When I look at the pass pro last night, there are moments where the offensive line absolutely got destroyed off of the edge, right? And there are moments where you look at this passing game and you say, well, I can kind of see why Justin only threw 11 passes because every time he went to throw the ball, he's getting killed. They are trying to save this kid so that he doesn't end up getting killed night in and night out. We don't want to see another Cleveland Browns game. But at the end of the day, right, there's a combination of things there. Yeah, there were some plays where the offensive line didn't do its job, but there's some plays where Justin Fields is making the offensive line's job twice as hard by not making a decision quick enough. I think the one thing that, that really stood out to me was the one play. You see him get sacked. I want to say by uh, uh, um, Preston, wasn't that Preston Smith? You know, Braxton Jones did an excellent job as uh, uh, Smith was was blitzing the edge, and, and he did a good job. Okay, we're going to keep him moving. We're going to move him away from Justin. He had him about four or five yards away from Justin Fields, and then all of a sudden, right, Justin looks like he's going to decide to run. And then just doesn't, doesn't make the decision, stops, had about 15 yards of open field in front of him. And I think that there's there's a combination of the pressures that are coming on Justin to where, yeah, the offensive line is causing some due to lack of talent, due to uh, uh, not having your full slate of linemen in there. Remember, we still don't have Lucas Patrick in at that starting center position. And Sam Mustafer looked like he was getting murdered on some of those plays. But at the end of the day, Justin Fields still has to make a decision. This is not college. You do not have a million years to make that decision. And so I I think at the end of the day, the one thing that's going to help both sides is Justin just making that decision sometimes where, yeah, if, that, if your wide receivers aren't coming open, if you don't see Mooney open, if you don't see uh, a Pringle open, right, I'm going to just take off and do what I got to do with this thing to get us positive yardage. At the end of the day, the name of the game is moving the ball forward. You can slowly uh, turn into that quarterback that you want to be, that passing quarterback, that deep shot quarterback that Chicago wants to see. But at the end of the day, right, I think of somebody like Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson this season, Lamar Jackson has been able to throw passes, right? He's been able to pass the ball okay, but he has his issues. This season, right, is the best we've seen Lamar Jackson be as a passer. And I think when you look at it, right, now he's using his legs. That's still a threat. He's still running for touchdowns. He's still getting into the end zone. You still see that quickness, but he's now understanding, okay, I'm a better player in the pocket. I've got a little bit better of an offensive line. It took a little bit of progression for him to get there. Play the game that's going to get you positive yardage, and I feel like that's something that the Bears really didn't do enough of. And then my final con that really stuck out out to me was the Chicago Bears uh, uh, play calling, right? I talked about how they didn't stick with the run in that game, right? Only 15 carries for David Montgomery. For me, that is way too low because it was what was working. Now, I do understand the fact that you have to go out there, you have to drop back and make some passes. There's some people that say, you should have just kept pounding the ball. You should have just kept pounding the ball. That's offensive suicide. Yurko said it on here. That's offensive suicide if you have 
an eight-man front, and all of a sudden, right, you're running into an eight-man front, and we saw that, right? Monty started getting caught in the backfield a couple of times. Uh, 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 Herbert started getting snatched up in the backfield. Those plays don't work when they know, okay, he's going to make a run here, and we're just going to stack the box and try to get in the backfield. And especially with this Bears offensive line having the struggles that it does, if, if there's an unmanned blocker coming back, you're going to have struggles all day, so you have to drop back to pass. But the one thing that I will say is that I feel like Luke Getze got way too far away from it in that second and third drive. And it really puts you behind the eight ball, right? On the first down play on that uh, uh, second drive, right? Justin, to me, that's the play I believe with Braxton Jones where he, he gets uh, Preston Smith out of the way. But he did a good job, uh, or, or Justin didn't do a good job of making a decision quick enough, ends up getting a sack, you lose yards. Sucks, right? Next play should have been a run to get you back in a position to where you can get yourself into a third and short because at that point, Monty was running the ball well. And if you want to have an RPO, if you want to have a, a, a screen pass or something small, but it should have been something quick to get you right, uh, an extended run play or a run play to me to keep that uh, uh, pressure on their throats. They couldn't slow you down with it. They, they had a couple of plays where they were doing a good job getting in the backfield and gobbling it up, but you have to mix in that pass of run, that mix of, you have to mix in that mix of run pass and I feel like on that one, right, he went pass. And then on second down, he went pass. And now you're in a third and long situation, and you have no opportunity really to get the ball out. And then you go with the screen pass on that one. I feel like that is kind of like offensive suicide in that situation where, okay, now we're in a third and long. We don't have a lot of options on the on the pass pro side. We need these routes to uh, 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 be completed for us to get a first down. And the only way that's going to happen is for us to have good protection, which means we're going max protect, which means Justin has even less weapons to throw to. There's so many factors that come into play when you get into that situation. And so for me, I really have to look at the play calling of Luke Getze kind of in the in the middle of that game, the second uh, or was it the second quarter. Yeah, the second quarter, I think really got away with him in play calling. And then listen, in the third and fourth. Yeah. Did you get it back? Absolutely. Did it turn back into the kind of game you wanted? Absolutely. It did. But at the end of the day, it was too late by that point, because what was working running the ball and running the ball takes a lot of time. So. I just look at those situations, right, and I say there's a lot more cons that I could go into. <laughs> Don't get me started on the officiating crew, but there's a lot more cons that I can go into. But there's issues that reside with the Bears' talent level, and there's issues that reside with the personnel uh, 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 making the calls that – those are things that you can fix, right? The talent level, maybe not so much, but to me, right, like how you coach that talent up, how you put them in a position to win, right? And at the end of the day, listen, we're one and one. There's a lot of people that had us 0-2 coming out of this. I said San Fr I said we'd beat San Francisco, we'd lose to Green Bay. Guess what? We beat San Francisco, we lost to Green Bay, and you have Houston coming next. And, that, and it's not all gloom and doom, right? The NFL is a week-by-week -week thing. And it doesn't mean that all of a sudden the Bears are one and one and they're not going to win a game for seven weeks. You know what I mean? Like, I just I just think that there's a week by week progression. There's some things that need to be added on. There's certain teams you can add on to with that. Right. And at the end of the day, this Bears team is going to sh show growth throughout the season. And they're just not on the Packers level yet. You know whose level we're on? The team we're going to play next week. Let's beat Houston. Let's get 2-1. and one, And let's get Bears fans feeling good again. That's all I got to say on this one, man. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and rocking with us for another episode. As always, man, uh, 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 I do want to hear from you guys. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. What are your pros and cons from Sunday's game? And... Make sure you drop that bear down in the chat, man, to continue watching our Chicago Bears content. Click the links on the screen to check the links in the description below. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Peace.